This is going to be a simple, straightforward, on-screen Coinbase Pro tutorial. I'm not a master trader, and I remember when I first started using Coinbase Pro, it was very confusing to me, but this is a very powerful platform and very important to learn, especially if you're already using Coinbase. So we're gonna dive in and take someone who's a beginner and help them understand how this whole platform works. Okay, so the first thing you have to understand is that Coinbase and Coinbase Pro are kind of tied into each other. So you'll notice that when you log into Coinbase, uh, you can also log into Coinbase Pro. One login logs you into both of them. You'll notice they share address books, they share bank accounts. They, they're kind of like half intermixed and half their own thing. And, and it can be very, very confusing, but you'll get used to it as you use it. So the first thing you have to know is that if you've already got a bank account attached to your Coinbase account, that bank account is already attached to your Coinbase Pro account and you won't have to do this step. But uh, just for those that are brand new, we'll go over that. All you gotta do right here to fund your Coinbase Pro account is banking, okay? You're gonna go to banking, and right here on this tab, you're going to connect your bank account. You can see I can link a new account, and I already have an account there. Now, at that point, it comes time to fund your account. And you can fund multiple ways. You can fund directly from Coinbase. So you can pull money or Bitcoin or whatever it is you have already in your Coinbase account directly into Coinbase Pro, and it doesn't cost anything. You can move back and forth without any cost or you can fund directly from your bank account. So the way you fund it is you collect, you select deposit. Okay, that deposit button right there. And you'll see right here, you can deposit any of these assets directly from other online wallets, or in the case of US dollar, which most of us use, I can click US dollar, and I can use that bank account that's attached. I can go from my Coinbase account, or I can use a wire transfer. Okay, and you'll fund it with US dollar, and now you can use that US dollar to make any kind of trades that you wanna make. Now, the next thing, the thing that's really confusing to people when they first start is if we're not uh, used to crypto and we're not used to trading, it's hard for a lot of people to understand how to buy certain coins. And that's because the way Coinbase Pro works is it works in pairs. Okay, what I mean by that is when I see select market right here, these are all the different pairs that you can use to buy different cryptos. And so you, you're not always purchasing with US dollar or, or British pound, right? You're, you can purchase with other things. So I could purchase... Ethereum with Bitcoin, right? I'm doing kind of like a swapsies there. I could purchase Cardano here, ADA, with Bitcoin. Or I can do the same thing with um, Ethereum, right? I can purchase ADA with Ethereum, or I can purchase Solana here with Ethereum. So you've got to understand that that's how it thinks. It thinks in terms of markets. And so you can, sometimes you'll say, I want to buy this and it's in Coinbase Pro, but I can't figure out why it won't let me buy it. Well, that's because there's no pair of that coin with US dollar. Okay, there's no US dollar slash that coin pair. Maybe that pair has a coin, has a pair with Bitcoin. Okay, so some of these right here at the bottom, I bet if I scroll down some of these, uh, you won't be able to buy with US dollar. You'll have to buy Bitcoin, okay? And then there's a Bitcoin, you know, sushi pair or a Bitcoin Matic pair or a Bitcoin XYO pair, okay? So just understand that's how buying and selling works. It's really just trading pairs inside of Coinbase. And the way it works is if I was to buy, if I were looking to buy a pair here, right, to buy Matic, then when I click buy, it's gonna buy the first thing, the one we see first, and it's gonna sell or trade what's on the right. Okay, so you have to have what's on the right here and you're getting what's on the left here. That's how buying works. And selling is the actual reverse of that. I'm, if I'm selling Matic slash BTC, I'm selling my Matic and I'm gonna get BTC for selling that, okay? The next thing, and the thing that makes Coinbase Pro here so powerful and so much more powerful than Coinbase especially, is these order types, okay? So we select our pair here, which let's say we, we've got US dollar and we want to buy uh, something near the top here. Let's say we wanna buy some Bitcoin with our US dollar, okay? So we'll select buy here, okay? You can see you can select sell or buy. And it's gonna say, okay, we're gonna buy with our US dollar, we're gonna buy some Bitcoin. Now there's three different types of orders right here that you need to understand. The first type is a market order. And what that says is, I want you to make this as fast as possible, okay? Uh, I don't care, I want you to get it at whatever the, the best price is you can get right now for Bitcoin, okay? And in, in the case of Bitcoin, you're gonna get pretty much exactly this price right here because there's so much uh, liquidity, it's constantly being bought and sold. But as you get into some of these smaller coins, if you enter a market order and say, just buy this at whatever price you can get, there might not be anyone selling that coin at the exact price you're seeing on the screen up here, which means you might get a worse deal, okay? You might not get the deal, the price that you're seeing, because you're doing a market order, you're saying just execute as fast as you can. So that's typically what we wanna use, limit orders, okay? And what a limit order is, is you say, hey, I wanna buy Bitcoin, but I don't wanna just buy at any price. I wanna buy Bitcoin, you know, I've got an influencer or, or someone's telling me that Bitcoin's gonna hit in the $43,000 in the next few weeks. So I wanna buy Bitcoin at $43,000. So I'd click buy. I'd say I wanna buy one Bitcoin or how much Bitcoin I wanna buy. And then I would set a limit price, okay? I'd say 43,000, okay? Now, 
it's gonna wait and this order is just gonna sit here and hang out until it finds uh, somebody selling Bitcoin for 43,000, which maybe it will hit, maybe it won't, right? And then it will execute that order. And then I can turn around and click sell, right? I can say, okay, sell my Bitcoin now. Someone told me it's gonna hit 52,000. So I can enter sell one Bitcoin for $52,000. And now should this all work out according to plan, I make $9,000, right? So those orders are very, very helpful for, um, uh, for, for anyone that, that's really getting involved in this because a lot of times you'll look at a chart, right? And you'll say, okay, it looks like, so a lot of times this is very helpful because a lot of times you might look at a chart like this basic chart we're seeing right here and traders might say, hey, I think it's gonna bounce if it hits this price again, right? And you can see that's right about 41,000. If it hits 41,000, it's probably gonna hit that and bounce because that's what it did a few, a few months ago. So they'll put in a limit order to buy right at 41,000. And you can see during this big, huge drop just a few weeks ago, if we zoom in on that candle right there, uh, if you understand how these work, that day the price dropped almost all the way to 41,000 and then rebounded and, st and started going up again. So, so these orders can help you make a lot of money. I always have limit orders at very low prices, just in case. Crypto's crazy, right? There's a crypto market crash every few months, it seems like. Have a few limit orders hanging out there for really low and see if they get filled. I've gotten really lucky before. Okay, and this last number order is called a stop order um, or a stop loss. And what this is, is let's say I buy Bitcoin at 46,000 and I say, uh, you know, I'm thinking it's, it's on its way up, I'm gonna buy it at 46,000, but you wanna set like a max loss. Okay, you say, I'm willing to lose up to $2,000 in this trade, but no more. So I could say, okay, but if this Bitcoin that I already purchased reaches 44,000, okay, I bought it at 46,000. If it reaches 44,000, then I want you to sell my entire Bitcoin. Okay, like I don't wanna lose any more than $2,000 on this. So if, if it hits 44,000, I'm gonna assume I mischimed the market and I'm out. Okay, so stop price 44,000, sell my entire Bitcoin here. And then you can set a limit price and you can say, hey, 66,000 or not 66,000. You can say like, hey, as long as it's above 43,000, anything above that limit price there will, will fill. Um, as long as it's above 43,000, then I'm, I'm okay uh, for you to make that sell quickly. Okay, so this is typically, this is typically used if you're, perhaps trying to buy, as Bitcoin's going up really quickly, you try to buy it and ride kind of this uptrend, um, but, but saying, hey, but if it happens to drop, then I'm good. Or you could say, hey, I'm $2,000 in the profit on Bitcoin, so you set a stop loss for $2,000 below that, which means now I can't lose money. Okay, I've set this awesome stop loss, I'm in the positive already, now I've set this, this loss to where I can't lose money in this trade, the worst that can happen is I just get back initially what I put in, which a lot of traders do and it works really well for them. Okay, so utilize these limits and stop orders a lot and don't use too many of these market orders uh, unless you really need to, you have a reason to buy right now. Now I'm gonna briefly go over all this other stuff that Coinbase shows you, but I'm just gonna tell you most of it you're not gonna use and so you don't need to know too much about it. First thing is the order book. This is just like we talked about, this is all the different orders that are happening right now. Okay, these are all the, the people buying and selling Bitcoin constantly and you can see this is how big it is. So someone's, well, I can't even, it's moving so fast you can't even see, but this is how much Bitcoin someone sold, right? And this is the price they're selling it for. And you can see it's just, it's moving so fast. It's just constantly being bought and sold right now. So you can always look at that and kind of see something. You can see it gives you a chart here. The chart, honestly, on the app is better than what you're seeing right here. I wouldn't use that chart if you're doing any kind of charting. It's not very good. Um, I would go to coinmarketcap.com and they make much better. You can see, I'll show you one of the charts we're looking at. They make much better looking charts right here that give you a much better idea and you can kind of sort through different time frames and things and just get a better idea of what we're looking at here. Okay, so that's the, the charting right here and then you can see you can see kind of a history of what's happening right here. This is actively happening now and this is a history. But again, you're gonna ignore most of this. You're never really gonna be using this much. Uh, I, I've probably looked at this maybe once in my life. What you are gonna use a lot is this right here, okay? We've got this orders button right here, okay? And this gives you access to, we talked about these limit orders where you're, where you're making all these different orders and maybe they're filled now, maybe they're not. You know, you're kind of just waiting, hoping that the price goes as low as you want it to go or goes as high as you want it to go. You can go here and see all your open orders, okay? Any orders that are currently waiting to be filled. And you can see I've got quite a few. You can go see all your filled orders, okay? So these are all the orders that you've, you've done, all your, basically your entire history of buying and selling any crypto. And then very importantly, you can go see how much you spent on fees. And this is 30 days. So this is how much I spent on fees in 30 days. I trade quite a bit. That's still 230 bucks down the drain in fees. Okay, so this is all the ordering. This is looking at the history of our ordering. And the last thing you'd wanna look at is on the top here, you'd click on portfolio and this will tell you what you own. Okay, so I can see my whole portfolio right here. I can see uh, specific balances, okay, right here. I can see if I've done any deposits or withdrawals right here and right here. And uh, 
And, and this is where you'll kind of go to, to get a good idea of what you've currently got going on inside of your Coinbase Pro account. Uh, now, two last things. The first one is withdrawing and depositing. Typically, you're going to want to, and it might even make you now, you're going to want to use an address book. If I go in here, this uh, is an address book right here. And what these are is this is kind of like telling Coinbase, hey, these are addresses that I own that I might withdraw to. Anything besides these addresses right here, I don't want you, I want you to have a 48 hour withdrawal window, meaning you don't let any money come out for 48 hours unless it's going to one of these addresses. That will help you in case you're hacked or anything which happens all the time, be much safer. So you're gonna wanna go to that address book. You're gonna wanna set up maybe address books to your MetaMask or anywhere else that you've got wallets and set those up and then you're gonna to wanna to turn on this whitelisting right here and that will, that will make your, uh, your Coinbase Pro account so much more secure. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to do that and then anytime you want to withdraw or deposit, you'll go to the trade button up here and you can deposit right here or you can withdraw right there and you select a coin and what it's gonna do is it's gonna give you a Bitcoin address. So you'll click I understand here um, for Bitcoin, right? And it's gonna give you a QR code or a wallet address and you can use that to deposit um, or also you can use the reverse of this as well to withdraw out of Coinbase Pro. Now, one last thing, I actually use the Coinbase Pro app. Let's see if you can see that right there. Uh, I find it much easier to understand and much more user-friendly than the online portal. And so everything that I just showed you is available on the app, but it's, uh, the charts look a little simpler and everything just kind of is, is more clean looking. And so if I were you, that's honestly where I do most of my trading is on the Coinbase Pro app, which sounds crazy. Typically a phone is limited, um, but I've just found it's much easier for users to see and understand how the app works. So that's Coinbase Pro. There's a link down below to sign up for Coinbase. If you haven't signed up for Coinbase, uh, that gets me $10 and I believe it gets you either five or $10 as well. So it's kind of a win for both of us. And again, if you like basic crypto tutorials without all the fluff and hype and promising that you're going to 100x your money in a week, that's what this channel is all about. So click subscribe and thanks for watching.